So after three weeks in Albania, in the Cartier Vienno, they brought us to the train station, direction Castel Nodari. And our aim, of course, was this one. Get the Capi Blanc. This was our, our aim. We dreamed about this one, you know. And uh, so finally, we stood in front of the ca Caserne La Passe. And, and Caserne La Passe should be our home for four months. Unbelievable. And as we stood in front of the Caserne La Passe, you could see a steel grid, a big steel grid. And to the right side, a wooden guardhouse. And in this guardhouse, there was standing a legionnaire with a capi blanc, with a famas, with a bayonet, and his face was a mask of rigidity, you know? He did not even look at us. And when you see, when he had a look through the steel grid, you could see a long building to the right side, a long building to the left side, another building across, and in front of this building, a flagpole. You could see the tricolor, you know, the French flag. So we crossed the grid steel on board of trucks, turned one round, and the truck stood, finally uh, stopped at the building, at the left building. And on the second floor of this building, there was our new home. It was a big room, big, big room with about 45 beds, one on top of each other. And the floor was a wooden parquet floor. And each time you stepped on this wooden parquet floor, it was a, it, a terrible crunch, you know. It makes a lot of noise, it was crazy. So we have 45 beds, 45 uh, cupboards, all iron, and yes, and 45 men. And already if, after the second or the third day, you could see, you could see clearly see here, there was kind of mafia building, you know. There's the Russians in one corner, the Germans in one corner, then the Albanians, and of course the British gentlemen, you know. I had a lot of British, a lot of these British uh, fellas had uh, had made the war in Falkland, on the Falkland Island. So they have been old soldiers, yeah. And it was, a, and for me, in the beginning, it was a mystery how we could uh, weld together a brotherhood of men, you know, a unit supposed to go to war and understand each other. For me, it was a big, big mystery. So my first statement, my first impression was, Thomas, be aware, because this is certainly a fucking dangerous place. Yeah? So I had an adventure in the first week. I was sitting between the floors, uh, cleaning my boots, you know, to make them shine. As suddenly somebody took my boots from behind and took them away from me. And I had a look. It was Erkal. Erkal was a Turkish guy, a big one, a terrible boxer. And he smiled at me and told me, thank you for your good job done. But now these boots are my boots. My first reflex was to stand up to take my boots again. But then I had a look around me. I saw one, two, three other Turkish guy from his Turkish mafia. And they were just smiling at me smiling at me and I knew no 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 and in the same moment I heard somebody running down from the floor from the second floor and somebody jumped on Erkal took him away and they make ruly bully down down the stairs and then Thompson Thompson was a, a British gentleman he was my friend yeah from the from the beginning on and he was a, a fighter from the Falkland war and he he comes up um the steps with my boots in my hand and he gave the boots to me and he told me Thomas here are your boots but never never let somebody else take something away from you you are in the French Foreign Legion now you have to take care about yourself you know defend yourself whatever is the price you made you might pay for it okay and this was my first adventure and I think for me psychologically it was a good one yeah and uh, later on, I talked about the parquet floor, the wooden parquet floor. Every weekend, 
on our knees. We had to clean the parquet floor with a toothbrush. <laughs> it was great. It was, no, it was not great. It was terrible for us, you know, spending our weekend, our first weekend, cleaning a wooden parquet floor with a to toothbrush. Yeah, was not very, uh, <laughs> it was not, not, not a big motivator for us. But okay, we want, we want to wear the Capi Blanc, so we have to get through all, a lot of things. It was, um, I, I remember another, another scene. Uh, we have been in our room, and suddenly a caporal entered the room, was a, 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 a Irish caporal, and he, he screamed, Cyril Aranjas, Cyril Aranjas. And I was standing there, was, I didn't understand nothing. And he came to me, he was small, I looked down at him, and he told me, Cyril Aranjas. <laughs> and I was smiling, instinctively I was smiling because I didn't understand his, exciting, his excitement. And then he told me, okay, get in downward position, push-ups. So I made push-ups, push-ups, 10, 20, 50, 100, until my nose was in the dirt. I was exploded, you know. And then my binom come to me and told me, hey, Thomas, this was your caporal. And he only wanted that you make your boots shine. So that's how you learn. French in the French Foreign Legion. You learn it on the hard way, okay? And the other day, the same caporal came to our room and he, and he screamed, Est-ce rassemblement avant le building? What means? The whole section has to be rassembled immediately to take the shower, you know? And we wear all, all, only our towel, uh, a short, Legion short, with stripes green and red, and a soap in our hand, that's all. And behind the building there's been the showers, there's been about um, four or five shower cabins, the water was pff, not even warm, and he gave us 10 minutes to take our shower, to take the shower for 45 men, take 10 minutes. He was crazy, it, it, it was crazy, you know, so he had about I didn't, I'm not good in mathematics, but you have a head about uh, 45 seconds to take your shower. Great. It was a great lesson this day, how you can take a whole shower, an integral shower in 45 seconds. <laughs> Just stunning. Yes, and one day after the whole section came together, what, when I say it's section, what I'm, I mean is the platoon. So we had rassemblement downstairs and we ran, we ran through the gate to the next clothes uh, and equipment shop, a store from the French Foreign Legion, you know, from, from the regiment. It was about 800 meters away. So we were, so we ran there to get our, our, our okay, package, package, what means all your equipment, all your clothes, you know, BDU, shoes, coats and all this stuff. And one of the, one of the uh, clothes was a big coat. It was done, it was felt two or three centimeters thick. <laughs> I, I believe it, it came from the Algeria war. He had golden buttons there. And on each button you could, you could read Légion étrangère. But it was completely useless because we never wore it. Just took a lot of place in your armor. And then in this week they showed us how to, how to deal with your cupboard. How, how to form your television inside, get your clothes uh, clean inside, how to uh, iron iron your clothes and all this stuff, how to shine your boots. So it was a very interesting week. So we didn't have uh, a lot of uh, military instruction. It was all about um, culture of the French foreign legion. Yeah, how to salute, how to march on Paca Danse. Yeah. Traditions of the French Foreign Legion, Esprit Légion Étrangère. You know, it was all about this. You know, and they, they want us that we that we know all the NCOs and the officer officers, of course, of the name of the officers and their picture. You know how they look like, and of course, it it, it could be terrible bad for you if you don't know the name of your regiment's commander, of the commander in chief. It was. At this time it was Colonel Colcon. Yeah, I remember very well. He was a tinny guy with a 
eyes like a hawk. I loved him. Great, great gentleman, yeah. And uh, so the first week passed, the second week passed, and we knew that the moment that we have to leave the camp, to go to the farms, is very close. But this is another story. <laughs>